For relaxing times, make it Centauri time. It's about this time that the game grinds to a halt for about 25 minutes. After blacking out for some reason, our heroes share a collective hallucination of people even more annoying than they are. That's almost not possible. But at first glance, these guys do seem like way cooler characters than Squall and the others. One of them even uses a gun! Of course, Laguna is one of the most chicken shit characters in the game, so it makes sense that he hangs in the back. But don't you find it dull that all the weapons are essentially the same regardless of type, ammunition, or enemy? The only real difference comes in the magic junction to the weapon. Anyway, the other two don't carry guns. Kiros is a weird guy who likes to use punching daggers and stands around wobbling around with really bad posture like Voldo from Soul Calibur. And Mongo over there is iconic of everything that is ridiculous with turn-based combat. He's a big dude, so he throws a seven-foot harpoon the size of a boat anchor at his enemies, and then he has to go and get it and run back to where he started so he can throw it again. And the enemies let him, because it's his turn, I guess. Yeah, the Spartans would have had a way easier time if the Persians had called a timeout every round to let him go get their spears back. Yeah, great script writing here, too. Hey, Laguna, aren't we soldiers fighting timber? I'm sure soldiers in Iraq start conversations with that all the time. Hey, Sarge, aren't we fighting a war here in Iraq? You know, against those terrorists? Well, apparently they're not, because Laguna takes them into town without leave so he can catch a jazz piano act. Yes, I'm serious. He's got the hots for a lounge singer in a hotel named Juliet. Well, actually, she doesn't sing. She just plays piano. She wants to sing, but for some reason, probably a very good one, the hotel doesn't let her. Yeah, I know this is boring. I'm hitting the highlights here. The entire scene takes about a half hour of real time, where nothing is accomplished except a few brief minutes of throwing harpoons at magic mushrooms in the forest, and the rest of it is spent watching Laguna be a complete McFly. Now, should I go talk to her? Should I stay here? I mean, what if she says I'm no good? What if she says, get out of here, kid, you got no future? I mean, I just don't think I can take that kind of rejection. Eventually, the little G-tard works up the minerals to go and talk to her, when suddenly he gets a sudden catastrophic attack of the taco shits. Or something. I think he actually starts to Charlie Horse, which makes even less sense. You might understand if a dude actually lost his shit while talking to a woman, like actually shitting his pants out of nerves. But to have your leg chronically seize up? I think Laguna may be having a stroke. Well, eventually Julia takes pity on the weirdo and invites him up to her room. Now, the only possible interesting thing that could happen up there is sex or a pirate attack, but this is Final Fantasy VIII, so rest assured, neither will happen. Instead, we spend another ten minutes flipping through tech screens, and in one moment, Laguna is so outrageously boring, even to himself, that he falls asleep while talking. I'm not even sure this is possible, but one minute he's telling a story, and the next, bam, he's unconscious. So, narcolepsy, cataplexy, and sudden involuntary muscle spasms. Dude's got problems. I think Laguna can get out of the military on a medical, no problem. He definitely shouldn't be operating heavy machinery. And then you wake up. Yeah, that was time well spent. Well, the train pulls into Timber. Your mission, to find out what your mission is. You're supposed to meet an undercover contact and give him a secret password to maintain your cover. Oh yeah, Squall and the others don't look suspicious at all. Need I remind you that one of these guys carries a five-foot gun blade? I know you can't see it out of combat because apparently Squall stores it in his anus. <sighs> well, I know the password, but I give the guy the completely wrong one because I'm an asshole and I just want to see what happens. Does it affect the game in any way? No. Your choices are completely meaningless. They have no relevance to the plot. It goes on no matter what you do. So basically what the game is telling me is that I don't need to be here. So even though I gave the wrong password, I'm taken to the mobile headquarters of the Forest Owls, a group of resistance fighters who have hired Squall and the others as mercenaries, mostly because the owls are a bunch of pansies, and in total there are about five of them. The two most vocal ones are dudes named Zone and Watts. Oh yeah, great. Zone has the taco shits too. But it turns out that the leader of the owls is... her. Sorry, ma'am, still gay. And even if he wasn't gay, she manages to ruin the mood by asking after Cypher and seeming disappointed that he's not there. You know what? I no longer care what her name is. To me, she's just a whore. You know, back off, girlfriend. Cypher's mine. The best part of all this is that you get to name a whore's dog, too. And here's where you can really have some endless fun. Someone told me about another guy who named the dog Vaginal, but when I played for it, I went for Anal. 
as you can see, a whore's limit break uses anal, and you can learn many tricks with anal. There are a lot, but you start with anal rush, anal recover, and anal cannon. <laughs> the dog gets more powers from the Pet Pals magazines, like anal search, anal strike, and anal reverse. Ew. Now, as a whore walks around, she gets more anal tricks, and I think we all know that's true. You can learn more anal tricks by reading the Filthy Pet Pals magazines, which says all sorts of weird things about Zell I don't even want to think about. Now, I'm hard on the Gunblade, but Renoa actually has the most ridiculous weapon of any Final Fantasy character in history, and that's counting Waka throwing a soccer ball that turns people into stone. Renoa's weapon, according to Wikipedia, is the Blaster Edge, a bladed ring mounted to her wrist that acts much like a boomerang. Now, this is already physically impossible, and it's pretty stupid, but that's not the insane part. I'm talking about the anal cannon. When she loads her dog onto her crossbow, and using the power of her rage, fires the dog like a fucking rocket launcher. Have I completely lost my mind here? Does she not care if the dog is hurt? And how does her sissy crossbow manage to launch a 60-pound dog? And why does a dog to the face hurt more than the bladed chakram she already uses? Anyway, the big plan. And by big, I mean the most unnecessarily complicated plan that's sure to fail in history. Renoa wants to kidnap the president of Galbadia, who is riding on a train to somewhere. The plan is to covertly land on top of the train, using their own train on a parallel track. And of course, nobody will see the second train unless they, like, look out a window. Then Squall will uncouple the president's car by tinkering with fuse boxes, switching the track, getting in between the separated cars to attach the new engine, simultaneously pushing an exact copy of the president's car with a robot president inside into position so the guards don't suspect anything, and then escape on a third parallel track. Yeah, they won't hear the second train and feel the constant car decouplings. Do you have any idea how idiotic this plan is? We're relying on the guards being deaf, blind, and stupid, and not have anybody posted on the outside of the train, because it would just be so impossible to kill the two guards the president has protecting him. And what about the fucking dragons I can summon at will? Can't I just do that and derail the train by summoning the devil in front of it? Well, naturally, this plan doesn't work, because the president was smart enough to use, get this, a zombie body double. Look out! It's secret zombie president Ronald Reagan, and he wants to eat your brains because Alzheimer's took his. Yeah, so the owls had inside intelligence to know what the president's travel habits were, and to create an exact replica of the president's private car, but didn't know that he employs a shape-shifting zombie as a bodyguard. would be really intimidating if you couldn't just hit the undead bitch with a phoenix down and kill it instantly. Huh. Well, that was anticlimactic. Talk about one pussy boss. Who'd have thought being a vampire slayer was so fucking easy? Steaks and garlic? Waste of time. Chuck some feathers from the item store at it. Well, at least they can't blame me for this whole zombie thing. I filled my contract. Until Timber is independent. Oh!